This suggestion comes from friend of the show, Gallagher191, who specifically asked for 2D enemy mechanics. This is my first tutorial, so bear with me. To start, I created a new project. I added the first object of the game, which would be the ground, opened up the sprite editor, and immediately changed the size from 250 to 32. It doesn't really matter since it's gonna be just one solid color, but I like everything to be kind of uniform. Made it this nice green color and put it in the game. All right, I'm not really gonna spend any time on this because this video is about enemies and the ground is not my enemy. I made a player character, which is an important part of the uh, enemy process. All right, now we're getting down into the nitty gritty. I'm adding my first enemy here just by tapping the screen, uh, insert new object, and then you scroll through the object types and find the sprite. Our first enemy is gonna be a patrol type enemy. Think Koopas and your Goombas and such. Yeah, real basic, just made it a red ball to differentiate from the green ball. So for this fella, you're just gonna give him the platform behavior. This is the easiest way to do it. You just have to slide this editor out from your left side, click behaviors, and then search through the behaviors for the platform behavior. You could also do it a different way, which I'll show you with a different character later. For some reason on phones, when you add a new behavior, it doesn't instantly show you. So you have to like get out of that little editor menu and then open it back up. Anywho, you wanna remember to disable the default controls by clicking that little box. And then you'll go in, hit the instance variable in that same editor and add in a boolean. I always just name it right and set its initial value to true. Then we're gonna add in another new object, go down, find sprite again, and this one we're gonna call invisible wall. It doesn't really matter too much what it looks like because it will be invisible. Uh, however, I do change it from this red because it gets kind of confusing seeing all the red. You're gonna put one on either side of the patrol enemy, just copy it, paste it over. And you're gonna wanna pull up that menu again for uh, these guys and just change initially visible to false. You play it and they aren't visible. Great, everything's working so far. We'll now go into the event sheet and just cause I like everything clean, I go ahead and add a group. We'll call it patrol mechanics cause we are very creative. And we're gonna add an event to this group. Uh, go into patrol enemy and look for is boolean instance variable set uh, right and yeah so if it is set we're going to add an action so go in find the platform behaviors and look for simulate control uh, it should be the last platform behavior uh, and we're going to say right so so long as right is true the patrol enemy will move to the right and look at that just look at it just look at it just look at it yeah. <laughs> we do want the enemy to be able to move to the left so i'm going to copy that last event paste it back in there and invert the condition meaning that now if right is false the object will move to the left and we need a reason for right to be false so we're going to add in a new event click on the patrol enemy again and find on collision with another object pick the invisible wall and then add an action patrol enemy and we're going to toggle the boolean which I just passed doing 100, but I'll find it eventually. Toggle Boolean instance variable right. And this just makes it to where every time it hits one of those invisible walls, it switches from going right to left. And I'm gonna move this wall out some to give him a little more room to like walk around to give him more of a sense of being free range. And so now you have the basic building blocks for a patrol enemy type. Here, I'm gonna add in a new layer. Pretty simple, you just slide through like the project bar, slide over again, layers, insert layer above, and I'm making it for UI, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the name to UI. This isn't really relevant to enemy types, but just bonus content for you. Yeah, it's something that's kind of annoying since I'm using a phone, I like always have to have buttons on the screen, but having the ability to make games anywhere is like the only reason this channel is even like still going. To make the right arrow, I just cloned the left arrow and flipped it. And same process for jump, but you know, just rotate it. Now we can move around and jump and whatnot, uh, but I, I didn't show any of that since this isn't, you know, you're, you're not an enemy. I am my own worst enemy. Speaking of the enemy, uh, he doesn't do anything to you. So we're gonna fix that real quick. I'm creating a new group, calling it death, and adding a new event for the player. The condition is player on collision with another object. The other object is gonna be the, the patrol enemy, uh, add an action, go into system and we're gonna reset the layer, or restart the layer. Let's go ahead and check that out. Works perfect. Jump around it, avoid it a little bit and run into it and it'll restart the layer. I also went ahead and added scroll two to the uh, player. That way the camera follows him around. All right, let's say you want it to work like a, like a Goomba or any of like the main enemies in most platformers where you can jump on top of it and it'll kill it. We make a new event for that, add a condition, 
and we're going to check that the player's y value is less than the y value of the enemy and to do that you just kind of put less than i probably shouldn't have done less than or equal to but less than and then we'll do patrol enemy dot y oh yeah and i forgot to mention it also has to have the condition of uh, on collision with the patrol enemy so if you collide with it and your y value is less than that of the patrol enemy we're gonna restart the layout i think i did that wrong all right i see that i did that wrong i fix it here in a minute but yeah if your y value is less than the enemies then it should destroy the enemy if your y value is equal or greater to the enemy then it should restart the layout which is what i'm implementing here So let's go ahead and test it out. And it works perfectly. Amazing. I added a second of the same enemy type higher up to make sure it still works and it does still work. So that's good. I was kind of worried that it wouldn't. To add some player feedback, I wanted you to like bounce off of the enemy after you destroyed them. So to do that, go into add another action uh, when you destroy the enemy and you're gonna go into player. You're gonna set the Y vector and you're gonna, I set it to a negative 300 um, just to get an idea of like how high it needs to jump, I guess. So we test that out and it does go up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna change the value. And I set it to negative like a thousand. I uh, figured that should probably do the trick. So we test that out. Oh, well, I'm not good at this. And yeah, bounces your way up. All right, now I'm adding in a new enemy, a uh, similar like patrolling enemy type, but this one's going to be in the air. Uh, I'm essentially recreating this enemy from my game Rowdy Randy. Uh, so he will be dropping bombs and stuff as well. So I made this big oval. Uh, I'm going to move him up and I'm going to put these invisible walls next to him as well. I also give him a Boolean, uh, the same one, just right. And I'm adding a group for him. Uh, he's gonna work a lot in the same way as the uh, the ground patrolling enemy with one big difference being that he can't have the platform behavior uh, Because that would make him fall to the ground So instead of giving him any type of behavior I'm gonna treat him a lot like I do like backgrounds and endless runners where every tick It's gonna be setting an X position for him and this is all still gonna be based on whether or not the right instance variable is true so to do that, if the right instance variable is true, every tick we're gonna set X to patrol air dot X plus some number uh, multiplied by delta time. And the number is just gonna depend on how fast you want them to go. I'm just gonna do 64 for now and see how fast that is. And you may be wondering why we're multiplying by DT, it's delta time. I don't actually know, but for some reason, if I don't do that, my games get real like laggy. So I'm doing it and he's not moving. Uh, that's because I forgot to set his right to true. So we'll go ahead and test it again and it works great, but it's really slow. So to do anything with that, you just change the speed there. I'm gonna change it to 256, which I don't really have a reason for like why I make everything a multiple of 32, but you know, whatever. So with that looking good, we just uh, need to do one for if right is false, which is gonna essentially be the same thing, except uh, obviously right false and instead of a plus we're going to do a minus 256 and we need to add in the event of if air patrol collides with an invisible wall it will toggle the right boolean oh yeah and let's not forget i need to invert that so if right uh in invert that if right is false it'll do all the other stuff and hot diggity dog that's looking pretty good so i'm going ahead i'm going to hop back in here and i'm going to insert a new object and this will be the bomb. The bomb. which falls from the air enemy pretty much the same ordeal as every time i'm just making a little circle now one thing that is quite different with this is it is a physics object physics objects can cause some problems uh but as long as you don't have a whole lot going on, you should be good. However, you want to make sure anything that this bomb is going to interact with is also going to be a physics object, uh, which should just be like the walls and the ground. But it's pretty simple. You just go into those objects, make them physics objects, make them immovable. And as long as you're not having to like interact with too many different variables here, it should be fine. 
So we're gonna go back into the code and we're gonna set up a new event for the patrol air type enemy. So we go into system and we find every X seconds. I like for this aspect to be a bit random. So I do random uh, open parenthesis one comma three close parenthesis and that'll make it randomly every one to three seconds drop this bomb. If you want it timed better, you can. Uh, this is just kind of my preference. And for the action on this, we're gonna go patrol air, spawn another object. We're gonna choose the bomb object uh, and think it's at image point zero anyway, yeah. So my image point zero is at the bottom of it, uh, which I think, yeah. Oh no, it's not yet, but I'm about to put it at the bottom. Quick assign, bottom. And this just makes it like, that's where the bomb's gonna fall from. And I'm gonna add a new event to where the bomb gets destroyed uh, after a certain time. So uh, I need to go in on created with the bomb, add an action, and I'm gonna go find wait uh, in the system wait and i'm gonna make it three seconds and at the end of those three seconds i want the bomb to no longer exist so i'm gonna go in add another action bomb and destroy so it'll be created wait three seconds destroyed which as we can see here it works so that's great uh, i don't like the height of their bounce it doesn't bounce very high so to fix that you just go into that little editor menu and on elasticity, just change that. It's at 0.2, I'll put it at like 0.7. See how that works. So this is with 0.7 and I like that bounce. I think it's a lot nicer. Now we need the bombs to actually be able to hurt the player. So I'm going in and creating a new object and this is gonna be explosion. I'm not really gonna to dive too deep into like making the explosion. I just made a bunch of separate frames and made like red and white versions. Uh, and uh, that's about it, yeah. And it looks like an explosion. We're gonna go back into our event sheet and we're gonna add a new event to the uh, bomb group. Actually, I don't think I put bomb in its own group, but anywho, when the bomb gets destroyed, it will spawn a new object, which will be the explosion. Then we're gonna add an event for the explosion itself. Uh, when the explosion is finished playing its animation, uh, it will destroy. And we need one more event for the explosion, and that is when the explosion collides with the player, uh, it will restart the layout. We can test that out now. I think the explosion looks kind of neat for what it needs to be, and it works, so that is great. I did add a lot of other things to this game, but this video is already like way longer than I expected it to end up being. Plus GMTK starts tomorrow, so I kind of want to just get this out and then start working on that. So hopefully this was helpful. If there's anything in this video that like didn't work for you or did work for you, please let me know so I can make some changes uh, for the next one. And I can't wait to see what people make for the GMTK Jam. So thank you guys and bye.